Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at the BEMA 15LX60 V2 15 inch woofer. And so in this video, we're gonna do full test data with distortion and we're gonna, I'm going to provide my subjective listening impressions on this driver in a regular bass reflex enclosure. And then uh, based on its performance, a uh, little bit of a giveaway here, I'm going to uh, show a new complete DIY speaker plan set that's available uh, utilizing this 15 inch woofer. So some of the features on this driver, four inch voice coil, nine millimeter X max with a 47 millimeter peak to peak, which is uh, quite unusual to see. That's that's a lot of travel, uh, even though it is outside the tech, the, uh, you know, the nominal X max of the driver. So some headroom there for uh, base transients. So uh, looking at the published data, uh, they're using 120 dB vertical scale, but we do see a very linear response with breakup what appears to be at 1.5 kilohertz. Um, so what I've done is I've uh, provided my own uh, frequency response data uh, using the same vertical scale. And so you can see here the red curve closely matches uh, what the manufacturer has published. And so we see actually uh, breakup occurring. Uh, if there is breakup occurring, it's very benign and doesn't result in any kind of a peak, which uh, is better than what is published by BEMA. Now, the blue line is simply a 600 hertz low pass filter um, that I've put in place. And so the schematic for that is shown here. So it's a uh, fourth order low pass filter using the sledgehammer iron core inductor from Mattisound in 8 and 4 millihenry, uh, and then the 80, 80 microfarad capacitant, capacitor um, there with some uh, resistance. So that's usually done to tame uh, the knee at the crossover frequency. And so it's a neat little trick that I encourage you to try out if you're having issues uh, implementing a low pass filter or high pass for that matter. The little resistor in there certainly um, serves to soften that knee. And so changing the vertical scale to my standard 50 dB, uh, you can see the same result. Um, so this is uh, the same result, same measurement, um, just with the vertical scale changed. And so uh, moving forward, this is how I conducted my distortion measurements along with um, the complete speaker speaker plan set that I'll, that I'll show you later in the video. Um, so looking at the impedance curve, uh, my base cabinet is a 90 liter tuned to 33 hertz. And so you can see here, this is the result resulting impedance curve. Uh, we looked at distortion at 85, 95, and 105 dB. And so you can see here that at the 85 dB test signal, we're at 0.05% uh, percent harmonic distortion for the H2. Uh, extremely low. Uh, and so as we increase it to 95, we're still at 0.16 dB second harmonic. And then at the 105 dB, we're still at only 0.48% H2. And so this is an extremely well-performing uh, woofer in terms of its harmonic distortion. Um, same thing for the intermodulation distortion test. So I did a multi-tone, multi-band test signal uh, starting at 50 hertz. And so you can see here that the, stor the distortion is a full minus 62 dB down. Um, 0.08 percent at the 100 hertz region which is where we see the highest uh, distortion but just an incredibly low uh, distortion driver that we're seeing here um, very well performing um, increasing the test SPL you can see here the 95 is uh, still quarter percent and then at the full out uh, 105 dB, we're still at 0.8% intermodulation distortion. So um, things are looking very, very promising uh, with this driver. And so here you can see um, my test setup. So I did sound subjective listening evaluations with a two-way setup with the ES600 by radial. Uh, it's an attractive woofer. It looks very similar to the TAD uh, TL1601B. Um, so it kind of has the same kind of uh, JBL TAD appearance to it. And so 
Um, so for the testing and evaluation, I rigged this up as a two-way. Um, you can see here, this is the resulting frequency response with a little bit of a dip uh, in the 500 hertz uh, crossover region, which uh, for me, I find that perfectly acceptable. Um, so here's the resulting uh, crossover for the system. So you can see that we have our low pass fourth order. And then for the high pass into the compression driver, we have a fixed resistor L pad. We have a second order. And you uh, high pass and you can see here again I'm using the one ohm resistor there's a notch uh, filter here as well um, which results uh, in what I what I showed you earlier so this response here so um, so subjective listening impressions on this 15 inch woofer excellent output capability um, at my listening chair two meters away I was hitting 104 DB um, the base is clean uh, across its spectrum, especially in the 300 to 600 region, where, where, which is where a lot of 15 inch drivers fall short. Um, a lot of drivers uh, suffer with clarity in that region. And uh, so by uh, the soundstage depth could potentially be harmed um, when a 15 inch is starting to sound a little bit colored in that 300 to 600 hertz region. So um, you saw by the test data that we didn't have any breakup occurring in that region, that the driver was still linear uh, with low distortion. And so it was able to uh, reproduce that critical part of the, the bandwidth effectively, which is not, not always the case with 15 inch drivers. So uh, very good dyna dynamics providing good uh, mid bass punch that you can feel through your body. Um, so the driver had no problem utilizing its full 47 millimeter X max. It was uh, able to easily reproduce uh, those transients uh, with ease. So the low bass sound quality is textured, textured and refined uh, with no hint of sloppiness. Okay, so just um, touching on the overall schematic here, um, there is a new plan set on my site, and you can see it here. It's uh, speaker plan set 2154, and so it's utilizing the BEMA driver along with the ES600 uh, by radio horn. The compression driver is the SB uh, audience 65 CDNT, and it's and it's using the uh, custom uh, rear cover to help with the uh, loading of the driver uh, in the critical kind of 600 to 1.2 kilohertz region, and so that includes the 3D CAD files uh, for the rear cover. Um, and if you're interested in purchasing the horns, uh, we do have inventory on the ES600, both here in Canada and also in Europe uh, from the Athos uh, limited build. I'll put a description uh, in, in the link there uh, for um, that. So sorry, I'm just trying to get back to where I was, <laughs> lost my spot. Boy, did I ever um, let's see here. So. Uh, yeah, so just section view. It's a regular base cabinet, 90 liters with a down firing port. And then it has this, the uh, drawings for the speaker stand itself. Um, so yeah, check it out there. And uh, um, great overall performer on the BEMA 15LX60 uh, version 2. Take care and have a great day.